station now, it's completely different from when so I- One thing at a time, but not in a way- It's first and foremost an inside job. How, how best we could, I mean, I cut my own bang. Welcome back to The Next Level Woman. I'm your host, Dr. Lisa Hart. You know, we've been talking a lot lately about quantum leaps and how to make a quantum leap in your life, in your business, your success, your health, your relationships, whatever you choose to make a quantum leap in. And I thought you might find it interesting uh, to hear about the 14 traps. There are 14 traps that will hold you back from making your quantum leap. And these are all listed in Quantum Leap Strategy, a little book by Price Pritchett. It's even less known than his U Squared book, but um, if you want to read more about them, that's where you'll find it. Um, well, let's just go through these 14 traps. You have to avoid these. And I wonder if you will recognize yourself in any of these. So number one, the be reasonable trap, limiting your goals to what you think you can have instead of what you want. Now, sometimes you don't set out to be reasonable. You're going for what you want, but and what your heart wants really, but Typically, it's someone close to you, um, a parent, a spouse, a close friend. You know, they, they don't want you to get hurt. They don't want you to have to experience failure, or maybe they don't want to lose you. They may not even realize what they're doing, but they'll often sabotage you by encouraging you to be reasonable and to think about your plan B and you know so the be reasonable trap don't be reasonable be unreasonable and engage your heart okay number two the half throttle trap living life with a lukewarm heart this is this is just a loss it's terrible um you want your heart to be so fully engaged and if it's not then you need to get a different goal because I feel that a great life is a life lived with your heart fully engaged. Don't go half throttle. If you're half throttle, it's telling me that you are going after something that society tells you you should go for. Perhaps some something you think your parents would be pleased if you went for or your children. I know my children have pretty strong opinions of what I do, and I certainly have over the years. Um, maybe your significant other, it's hard to say, maybe someone um, you work with, but half throttle. If you can't say that you feel a heart, you know, a really engaged heart, then you should talk to me because we can fix that. Number three, the more of the same trap, reliance on trying harder instead of trying differently. So this is pretty common too. If, if you're doing something and it's not working, um, doing it harder, more of it, longer hours, is probably not going to change your results. And if anything, it could actually get you worse results because you're you're going to burn yourself out. That's an exhausted action. You want to have and you want to take inspired action. So don't rely on more of the same. And be open when you're doing your daily meditation. Um, I recorded one of those recently. And we'll put in the show notes where you can find it or you can email me. But if you go through that meditation, at the end, you should have more days than not a download, some sort of divine inspiration. 
write it down. You should have a journal just to write these things down. Oh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Um, it's amazing. Sometimes everything just comes together and crystallizes. So number four, the doubt trap, believing in your limits instead of testing the limits. So think about that. The limits are very artificial. So test your limits. Don't, don't argue for your limitations. Now, as a medical doctor, sometimes over the years, I have seen patients that really their whole identity was from their condition. Now, sometimes a condition can be defining, I suppose, but sometimes it would be something that could easily be um, changed if the person wanted to, but they will argue for that condition and the way it limits them. Um, very frustrating for me, but just think, are you, are you doing that to yourself? Um, believe in yourself and test your limits. Number five, the faith in the familiar trap, relying on your usual routines. So that's somewhat similar to the more of the same trap, um, subtly different. So always question things. Just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean it's the way it should now be done. You might be at a different chapter. You might have something else um, that would work better for you. Number six, the methodology trap. Focusing on means rather than ends. So um, for this, think about what you want, you know, the end result. So that's your job. It's not your job to say exactly how that's going to come to you. Does that make sense? Um, when you start saying, okay, as an example, I use this example sometimes. Um, okay, let's say you want $10,000. You have this opportunity and it's gonna take you coming up with an extra $10,000. You're gonna manifest this money. Okay, so you have that in mind. So if you are focusing on the means, then you're going to you know, perhaps say, well, I want that to come from my job. I want to get a bonus or you know, you're controlling how it's going to come to you. But that is not your job. That's the, the universe, God, that's God's job. So you just, you have to know exactly what you want. Hopefully it's gonna be heart, heart driven. And then you do take action. You definitely take action, but take inspired action, the kind of actions you are inspired to do at the end of your daily meditation ritual, for example, and take that kind of action, but then be open to however, however it comes to you. Number seven, though, what I can't see isn't their trap. Thinking you have to do it all by yourself. So one simple example of this would be, um, let's see, plant seeds. Um, I like to use the example of planting a sunflower seed. And you planted that morning, you can't expect to go out in the afternoon, that afternoon and cut sunflowers. So, but you know this, right? So you don't go out and dig up the seed, make sure it's still there and figure out what's wrong. Um, you can't see what's happening, but you know that it's happening. And number eight, the playing it safe trap, choosing the wrong risk. So this would be more like um, playing not to lose instead of playing to win. Number nine, the passivity trap, wishing for what you want instead of pursuing what you want. You know, in the 
um, movie The Secret came out, a lot of people were very frustrated because on honestly, the movie didn't focus at all on taking action. It was all about wanting things and then boom, they just appear. So action is a very critical part of this, taking inspired action and pursuing something, um, relentless pursuit. Um, number 10, the failures aren't allowed trap. Unwillingness to make mistakes and interpreting problems as proof you should give up and quit. Well, some companies won't hire an executive um, unless they have had certain failures along the roads because you gain so much experience from your failures, not just your successes. You actually learn more from your failures than you do successes. And I say failure, it's just a lesson. It's just a lesson. So you have to be open to having the world say that you failed. You just know in your heart that it's not a failure. It's just a lesson. The comfort junkie trap, being afraid to confront fear. There is this thing called the terror barrier that I teach about um, with my clients. And when you are making a quantum leap, when you're making a breakthrough, you will experience this terror barrier. And as you learn to deal with it, you make friends with it, you expect it, and you don't let it stop you. There are some techniques um, around that because otherwise you get right next to success. If you were just on the other side of it, imagine like a, a veil, on the other side of it is what you want, but you bounce off of it like it's you know, something rubber because you were just, you're terrified, you're frightened, and it's an irrational fear, the fear of the unknown. Um, it can get complicated, but just be aware of that. Number 12, the use it or lose it trap, not opening your gifts. So think about all the things that you enjoy and all the things you have at your disposal, relationships, assets, history, anything, everything. Open your gifts, open all of your gifts. Number 13, the preparation trap, bogging down and getting ready. I have certainly experienced this before. Um, perhaps you have too. You spend a lot of time getting ready to do something. So um, ready, set, go. Where the people who aren't wasting time, basically it's wasting time, it's a stalling tactic. People who aren't bogged down in that, um, more like ready, fire, aim, take action, hopefully inspired action, and then they course correct, they get feedback. The, the goal will teach you how to, how to achieve it as you go along, but you have to take action. You can't know if you're going in the right direction if your car is just sitting still or like walking around. Sometimes like in a big city, that I've never been to, I will put on the, my GPS for walking and I can't tell which direction is the right direction to go until I start walking. And then I see my little blue dot and sometimes I'm going the wrong way and then I can correct. Same way in life. And the number 14, the perfect timing trap, waiting for the right circumstances. Chances are those right, perfect circumstances will never actually, will never actually occur. You just have to start. I remember um, I have six children and I, I was, you know, I was CPA and then I was in medical school and residency and I had, I had babies no matter what I was doing because 
some wise person told me along the way, there's never a good time to have a baby. So we could talk about that and there might be better times than others, but I knew that I wanted a lot of children. So I had my children, even though I was working crazy hours as a medical student, as a resident, as a doctor, I had my babies and I don't regret it at all. Don't wait for the perfect circumstances for the, let's say you wanted a um, brick and mortar. Let's say you're an artist and you wanted to have a studio, working studio um, and gallery. So you would really like this one place, but would it be a good idea to wait until that one location becomes available? It might not ever come available. Or should you go with good enough for now? And then you have, you have your business. And then you can change from there. And you can apply that to so many things. So don't be waiting for perfect circumstances. You'll be waiting a long time. You know, like that um, Charlie Brown and pumpkin patch where they waited for the, the great pumpkin. Don't wait for life's great pumpkin. Okay. Stick with me. Let's all have a quantum leap. If you have any questions at all, you'd like to talk about any of these traps, I'd love it. Reach out to me and um, be happy to talk to you about that. Lisa at lisaheart.com.